Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the current blockchain tech stack, which technologies you need to learn, which technologies you need to invest in in 2021 and forward in order to build amazing crypto applications or blockchain applications. Now, this tech stack is changing all the time because this technology is new, this field is new, and the tech you used yesterday is not the tech you use today. So it's an ever-evolving, ever-changing field, and it's very important for you to stay up to date. There is always a new tools, there is always a new blockchain, there is always a new paradigm of creating dApps, but most of it is just noise. There are just a few technologies you need to focus on in order to be able to build 99.9% .9 of the use cases, 99.9% .9 of the dApps that you ever would want to build. So this video will save you a lot of time by guiding you in the right direction. So if you like this kind of content, smash the like, smash the subscribe button and the bell button. Also, be sure to subscribe to Morales Web 3 YouTube channel because here we're pushing content each and every day. If you want more content, if you want more deep tech, deep programming content about blockchain, about cryptocurrencies, this is the channel for you. Morales Web3. Find the link below and subscribe. That being said, let's talk about the current tech stack of blockchain. First and foremost, we have to understand what is a blockchain app? What does it actually do? And to use an example, we can look at Uniswap, which is a decentralized exchange. So people use Uniswap in order to trade different tokens, different assets. You can see the different trading pairs here. And this all happens directly on the blockchain. Uniswap is not an exchange with a server with a matching engine where all the trades happen. All the trades happen on the blockchain. What Uniswap is, is a blockchain app that allows us to make sense of the blockchain data. We can see nice charts, we can see nice graphs and nice tables and some statistics and we can use this app in a very easy way. So to define what the blockchain app is, it's a way for us to interact with the blockchain and execute commands on the blockchain. It's also a way for us to read data from the blockchain and visualize and show nice user interfaces to people. For example, the total liquidity in this exchange or volume in this, in this exchange. This is all done by taking the data from the blockchain and visualizing it. So that's the mission of a dApp. And the next question is of course, all right, so how do we connect to the blockchain? Who is this blockchain? Who do we call in order to get the data? What is our access point in order to actually read all of this and in order to execute commands? And here is where we need to discuss nodes because nodes are these portals into the world of blockchain. In order to do anything on the blockchain, we need to speak to a node. In order to read anything from a blockchain, we need to read from a node. Let's discuss. So the blockchain is not some kind of mythical creature. The blockchain is a database that has all the past transactions. Everything that has ever happened on the network, all the transactions that you've ever done with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, with Dogecoin, it's all stored in this database or data structure called the blockchain. However, who is holding this database? Where is this database hosted? Well, here is where we speak about nodes, like we already mentioned, in order to look into this database or in order to change something in this database by, for example, doing a new transaction on the network, you need to speak to nodes. So nodes are these machines that are speaking with each other because it is a distributed, decentralized network of uh, nodes. The correct word here is decentralized network of nodes because they're all running independently in different parts of the world by different operators, but they all run the same protocol. They all run the same software. So in the Ethereum network, it's normally Geth. So Geth is the Ethereum protocol, the implementation of the Ethereum protocol that all of these different nodes are running. All of different nodes ensure that only the correct transactions enter the blockchain and that everything that is incorrect gets uh, discarded. So if you try to spend money you don't have, all the nodes will reject it. So all of these nodes, they collectively hold the blockchain, the truth the single source of truth of which transactions have happened, which transactions they accepted, which uh, transactions they rejected. So they all reach so-called consensus. All of the different nodes need to reach consensus on which transactions to include and not include and so forth. Now, the details of this is its own topic, a huge topic, how they reach consensus. But the only thing we need to care about is that we have these nodes and you can ask whatever node you like, and you, will get, and you will get the current state of the blockchain, the current information 
of all accounts of all transactions what actually happens so these are the nodes and of course that's exactly the info you and i need when we are building our apps so theoretically it's possible that you and i run our own node because anyone can run a node you just install open source software and you can run your own ethereum node or bitcoin node or binance chain node the problem is though that these nodes are huge so when you're building an application the last thing you want to do is to spend weeks syncing a node ensuring that it works all of this tech is very nascent so all of the syncing normally is not just that you do it on the first try you need to do many tries you need to do many patches many fixes in order to get it to work so it's a big problem and no dub developer has their own node nowadays instead you use a service that makes this access to nodes easy and that's the first piece of infrastructure you need to know so this is the first layer in your architecture and here you need to connect to a node provider for example to infura infura only have ethereum and matic if you need more chains and other chains like binance chain you connect to morales so morales currently has ethereum matic binance chain and soon is gonna have avalanche is gonna have kvm cardano so it really depends on what you need but if you need a lot of different chains and all in one place then it's Morales. And this is your node architecture. Now you can ask in a very easy way with a very easy API because all of these node providers, they of course give you a very nice API in order to ask the data uh, from the nodes, what is currently happening on the blockchain, which balances, which transactions, and also to execute transactions, to add new transactions to the blockchain. You speak with the nodes. So that's layer number one. All right, perfect. Now we have connected to the node, we can build our application, everything done, everything perfect. Not really. The problem with speaking to a node directly is that you will not get all the information you need. It's very difficult to just talk to a node and be able to do big operations. For example, what Uniswap does, like I showed you right here. For Uniswap to show the statistics, like for example, the current uh, total value locked or volume or liquidity or top pairs, you cannot just ask this from a node because nodes are not made for that. Nodes are made in order to listen for current transactions and add them to the blockchain and basically give you the current state of the blockchain. But to do some analytics, to do some queries, to do something a bit more advanced, you cannot ask it from a node. Node is just basic infrastructure. In order to do some kind of, you know, top list, for example, here we have top coins on Uniswap. This is more filtration, aggregation. You need to aggregate a lot of data or to show this is also a lot of data aggregate here. In order to do anything of, uh, like that, you need to index. You need to index the blockchain. What does it mean? It means that you pick out information from the node, you pick out information from the blockchain and you put it into SQL database, you put it into Postgres, you put it, and it, it into MongoDB, whatever that you can work with, whatever you need in order to make these big data operations. Maybe you put it in some kind of distributed database cluster, but speaking directly to the node and to expect something from the node of this caliber is impossible. If you want just, you know, very, very simple stuff, you can speak directly to the node, but almost no apps today can do that and be and be sufficient in 99.99% of the times so you need another level on top of your node level and that is the indexing level you need to index the whole blockchain data in order to query it in order to query it quickly in order to run aggregation run filtration queries and so on and so forth so that's our next layer and of course even in this second layer there are several different providers for example you have BigQuery from Google and this is a service that you can use in Google Cloud where you use SQL like syntax in order to query the Ethereum blockchain the problem is that they only have Ethereum, so if you want to build an app that works on Binance Chain or Matic, you cannot really use it. And also, it's very expensive. <laughs> and trust me, I've tried it. We've tried it in our team. This is extremely expensive. Then you have other options like the graph. Uh, here is basically a protocol where anyone can share their indexed data. So if you have some kind of indexed data you want to share, you can connect to the graph. And here you're relying that other people have the data you need. It's not that, that you use some kind of service that is promising you anything. It's just that you use this protocol that may or may not have the data. And then you have something like Morales as well. So Morales is not only a node provider. You can use Morales just to speak to nodes directly. Or, or you can also query Morales. You can, you can use 
querying capabilities and you can do big aggregations you can do big queries you can do all kinds of complicated operations that you may want to do on the data that originally came from these nodes that we discussed so this is the second layer so the first layer we called it the node layer i will put an n the second layer is so called indexed index level so here's where we have all data index and you can also query it. And of course, the beauty here is that when you are speaking to BigQuery on, or when you're speaking to Morales or any other provider of indexed data, you don't even have to care about the nodes. You don't care about this lower level right here because it's all abstracted away. You're just speaking to this way nicer, way easier to use API in order to get everything that you need in your application. So abstraction is very important in all tech stacks and especially in crypto because it does become very complicated very quickly. The good thing is that we do have tools that make it very easy for us. What is the next level? Why do we even need a next layer? Isn't it enough to have BigQuery and Morales to use the index data? Well, not really, because BigQuery, for example, it's for backend engineers. You need to have your own backend infrastructure normally to just speak to the index level. And here is where we get the next level of development, which is serverless where everything is packaged for you already. You don't even need to think about connecting to some kind of index provider. You just use one provider that does everything, everything for you. So this is what we at Morales focus on, where we basically package the entire experience so that you as a developer only have to use a few lines of code to get most of the functionality, to get everything going as soon as possible. So this is demonstrated, for example, if you go to Morales documentation and if you want to log in your user, the only thing you have to do is to write morales.web3.authenticate and you have your user logged in. You don't even need to care about anything else. You just use this SDK, very nice SDK. You don't need to host your own server or do anything like that. Or if you want to get a balance, balances from a user, you just write this line of code. And of course, on the back end, Morales will go into the query uh, query level and go into the indexed uh, index layer to get all of the data that you need. But you as a developer, you just write one line of code to get, for example, all ERC20s over your users, or you do one line of code to get all the NFTs on Ethereum or on Binance chain, or you do just one line of code to get all transactions for your user. So this is the next layer. This is the layer where you as a developer, you don't even care about what kind of index is happening on the backend. You don't even care about how the data is indexed exactly. You just use simple functions, simple code to query what you actually need. And most dApps need to log in a user, they need to get all transactions, they need to get all real-time transactions. When something happens in real time, they need to know that they need to add transactions to the blockchain, they need to execute new transactions. So this is what we're dealing with in the next level. So this is called serverless, where you as a developer, you just build your frontend and everything else is handled by something like Morales. You don't even need to figure out which index provider to use, what to do. You just write, hey, get all ERC20s, get all tokens, get all NFTs, and everything is served to you on the silver plate. This is the next serverless layer. And frankly, in blockchain, we are the pioneers of serverless. We don't see a lot of other providers do something like this. While it's very popular in traditional development, when you build mobile apps or when you build web apps, you normally use a serverless provider, like for example, AWS, you can use serverless or like Firebase. So in crypto, we are alone here right now. And will it be like that forever? Probably not. But Morales is the only solution where you get everything on a silver plate in this fashion. And as you see, you can also use Morales only for indexing. I mean, if you want to go a level, level lower, you just want indexing, you can use that as well. You can use Morales or you can use Morales only for nodes. You can connect to the raw nodes as well. But as you can see, we offer technology in each and every step of this tech stack where the 
level of serverless is basically packaging everything and just gives you a nice easy SDK. So this is what we're dealing with on the serverless level. Let's move on to the next level because believe it or not, we're not finished. So the next layer is the front-end layer. Here is where we actually build the web apps, the mobile apps, and we use technologies like React, which is a global standard by now for building web apps, as I'm sure you all know if you're a web developer. Here is where you need to know something like Web3. So when you're using React, you need a JavaScript library called Web3 in order to interact with all of this that we just discussed, in order to even have a website that talks to the blockchain, you need to know Web3 library, which is very easy to learn, extremely easy to learn. Uh, here is where you need some kind of mobile SDK. So for example, with Morales, you can easily build iOS apps and Android apps. We're focusing a lot on that. Why? Because we don't see any good mobile crypto SDK. There is none, zero. Uh, so this is something we're focusing on. And here is where you also have a lot of, um, you know, design, CSS, user interface to make it look nice. So this is the front end level. You can also maybe call it the app level. Here is where actual apps are being built. This is the front end where you build the buttons, the text, the menus, all of that good jazz. And then you speak, for example, to Morales for everything blockchain related and you get everything on a silver plate. Even if you're a new JavaScript developer, you can build amazing dApps. You can build and get amazing results quickly. So for example, like on Morales Web3 channel, we show you how you can clone Rarible in 24 hours using Morales, or how you can clone Etherscan in five hours using Morales, or how you can clone Zirian here in 20 minutes using Morales. So this is the power of serverless, guys, where you as a developer don't have to think about anything except the front end, except how your website looks like, how it feels, who will be using it, why they will be using it. And of course, this saves a lot of time because you can go to market in a matter of days instead of months, you can move quickly, you can get clients quickly, you can get users quickly, and you can really deliver quickly. So that's the power of serverless and that's the power of Morales. Now, there is still one thing that we did not discuss. There is still one piece of tech that we have left out. And that is that up until today, or up until right now in this video, more correctly, we've only been discussing how do you work with current blockchain data. But as you know, Ethereum, Binance Chain and other blockchains are scriptable. You can actually script which kinds of transactions people can do. You can script which kinds of things, which kind of events, which kind of funds people can interact with on the blockchain. You can actually add your own code <laughs> to these nodes. So here is where we start we're starting to discuss how actual smart contract development works. And this is a bit other topic because when you're building smart contracts, you're really coding what these nodes have inside of them, what kind of programs they can run, what kind of transactions and manipulations they can do to the blockchain, which kinds of use cases and dApps you can build on the blockchain level. Because everything we, we discuss now is just building on top of the current smart contracts, on top of the current transactions, on top of the current data. But you can also, of course, script the blockchain. You can define new transaction types and so on and so forth. So here is where you use something like Viper programming language or something like Solidity prog programming language. And this is really its own topic. I don't want to spend too much time. I just want to tell you that of course it's possible to script the nodes as well and add your own logic, your own assets. If you want to launch a new coin, for example, or you want to launch a new NFT, a new asset, you need to change what the nodes actually have inside of them. You need to add a new type of asset. And this is of course done through simple programming through Solidity or Viper. So in order to learn this, you go to Morales Web3 and here you have a playlist for Viper programming. So you can actually code blockchain using Viper, which is a lot like Python. So if you like Python, you will enjoy Viper programming. Or if you want to learn Solidity instead, you can do it in this playlist. So Solidity is more like JavaScript and both Viper and Solidity are used for the same thing. It is to script the Ethereum, Binance Chain and Matic blockchains and all other blockchains that are based on Ethereum. So guys, this is it to summarize. Let's just overview everything once again. You have, first and foremost, the nodes. 
The nodes normally you don't run yourself. Normally you use a provider like Infura or Morales to speak to the node. However, even if you connect to the node, it's not enough. You need to index it. You need to put data into a database so you can query it properly. Here is where we have BigQuery, the graph, or you can also use Morales for this as well. So as you can see, Morales really has this vertical integration where you can use Morales on different levels. The next level is serverless, where you don't even have to care about which kind of database, which kind of infrastructure you have, because the problem with this indexing, of course, is that you still need a backend. You still need to connect these different providers. And some of them will have some blockchain, some of them will not have some other blockchains. Well, Morales has everything you need. So this is the serverless layer where you don't even need to care about anything. You just build your front end, which is the next level. You just use simple JavaScript or you use Morales SDK for iOS or Android and you just focus on the actual app, user experience, and then you get everything on a silver plate. Everything you need to do is just one line of code, like logging in, getting transactions, getting NFTs, creating new transaction. And then, of course, if you want to create new assets on the blockchain, you want to add more functionality to the blockchain so that these nodes actually has your code. They run your code and then this all gets propagated from here to here, from here to here. It goes up all levels. So if you want to achieve this, you need to learn something like Viper or Solidity, which we teach on Morales Web3 channel. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> what a journey to explain everything. But this is the current stack. And by taking it step by step, layer by layer, you understand the whole thought process. Because just arriving in blockchain and trying to grasp everything is impossible. You need to have an explanation like this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Be sure to smash the like, bell button, subscribe button, and of course, subscribe to this channel and Morales Web 3. Because if you want deeper uh, programming, it's Morales Web 3. Guys, thanks a lot for being here. See you all very, very soon. Have a good day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.